please everybody stand up. So, yeah, I guess um, I'll start giving you a little tiny intro um, about me. I was a musician. My training is in music. Um, I went to Berklee School of Music. So before I got into the whole Railsy space, I um, was in a distinctly non-technical space. And um, I had no technical background prior to 2008. 2007. Um, so, my um, the company that I started is called Mad Mimi, and the goal of this talk is uh, is the goal of this talk is to present a couple of things that uh, I found uh, useful to myself as a now leader of a team of developers and also an interaction designer. Um, Mad Mimi is a fairly popular Rails app. It's um, pretty high traffic and we've got um, lots and lots of servers and lots and lots of, thank God, customers. Um, so without further ado, I'll um, begin. This talk is called My New Definition uh, of a Great Developer. And um, the founding story of Mad Mimi is that I was in my little music studio. I am a jazz bass player, but uh, I ended up in New York writing commercial music, which I really didn't enjoy. I was writing music eventually for the Oprah Winfrey show, and um, it wasn't so fulfilling and enjoyable, so I was toying around on Media Temple, and I found a little sort of uh, ruby gem icon, and I clicked on it, and it kind of got me thinking, hey, let me make an app for musicians. And uh, I started mocking up some ideas for an app for musicians that I had. And uh, I'm not really so much of a musician's musician, uh, kind of just, uh, it didn't work out so well. And um, it, the, the, the overall interface was uh, where musicians would be able to take biographical details and MP3s and uh, images and sort of drag them into this kind of stacking UI and uh, would be able to then send this to clubs, venues, and get booked, manage their bookings, etc. And I hired uh, two of probably the most popular Rails developers um, on the scene at the time, 2006, 2007. And um, they were real luminaries. They were really, really just super, super hardcore guys who were right up there on the top uh, few of the sort of working with Rails uh, popularity profiles. And um, a couple of months later, things weren't going so well. I didn't have a product. I Things were all over the place. The product wasn't defined. I didn't know what was really which direction I was going, what the product was, and um, things started taking a turn from the worse. And uh, the entire product was built um, in that coffee shop. That's Red Horse Cafe in Park Slope in Brooklyn. And um, the team now is about 30 people. And I've only met about, a th I don't know, probably about six people on the, on the team. It's totally remote. It, there's people in 12 different US states. Um, right now, we have about 150,000 people using the application. Um, and these people are pretty much active. Uh, a relatively uh, significant portion of those are paying users. So this includes also free folk using the Mad Mimi free email um, tool. Right now, Mad Mimi sends about 45 uh, million emails a day and um, that's on behalf of some fairly large cust companies over here um, you know AOL corporate not like AOL sort of main um, pragmatic bookshelf uh, the Grammys Columbia University so 
that's the background of the product. That will be the case study, effectively, for um, a couple of points that um, I'd like to focus on now. What I thought a great developer was. I thought that a great developer was popular. I thought that a great developer was a real mover and shaker in the open source space. Um, the guy who I originally built uh, was my real main partner on building the composer is Toby Langell, and he um, he was he is well prototype is kind of not so happening right now, but he was the sort of team leader of the prototype uh, JavaScript library. We're trying to move <laughs> away from prototype right now, um, and a great developer was charismatic. My new idea of a great developer is a good communicator, is somebody who communicates using punctuation, somebody who doesn't just write one-liners with no punctuation and sort of who, who takes care to communicate and to, to invest thoughtfulness into their communications, whether it's internally or whether it's with the outside world, um, i.e. customers and people using their, the, the stuff that they built. Takes a sick pleasure in testing. Um, I really, really love developers who um, test not just using test suites and uh, even though a lot of the developers in the Mad Mimi space spend more time writing tests than actually writing uh, functional code, um, testing from a user's perspective is so, so, so important because you can miss so much with just writing tests and going from your, uh, using your, your, your benchmark of success as does this work or does this not work. Um, testing from a user's perspective and seeing how it feels is really significant um, for a real live product. And uh, try to see as best to think like a human. And I'm going to show you what I mean now. What I thought a great developer is, is an awesome machine, a smart, genius, brilliant guy who just has everything at their fingertips who can just code super fast and doesn't make mistakes and everything just looks so beautiful and they have all the tools and the resources that they need. My newer idea of a great developer is one who nurtures their human side. Now recently in Mad Mimi, we uh, had a little interesting problem, tiny, tiny, minuscule problem. We got to create an error message. We have to upload a CSV file and if it's not a CSV, I'm sorry, we have to upload <laughs> an image file. And if it's not an image file, we've got to give the user a little bit of feedback to say, sorry, this is not an image file. Um, please only upload an image file. Um, so we have a really brilliant, awesome, sysadmin-oriented developer who produced the following. This is their first error message that they produced. It says, can you see it? Right. No CSV apostrophe S is not an accepted image. Its content type does not match one of the following. And including there, included in there is image forward slash PJPEG. I've never heard of that image format. So, so then I went back and I said, hey, like, uh, let's try something a little bit less robotic. Take two. Oops, something went wrong with this image. Promotion image file size must be between 0 and 1048576 bytes. And, you know, at this point I realized, okay, okay, like, um, a mind shift is necessary here. And, and, you know, a lot of people make these kinds of mistakes. A lot of people don't really put energy into thinking about the communication sweetness of their error messages and the general messaging that happens around an application and general user interface work. What I thought, a great developer refines, designs, implements, and polishes. A great developer can make my product happen. I'm a client. I have this kind of like weird sort of half-baked idea. Give it to a developer or a development consultancy and these guys will make my developer rock in the marketplace. My new idea of a great developer is one who lessens their weaknesses by getting others involved in cool ways. 
What I mean by this is when I originally started Mad Mimi, I worked, um, it was just me and Dave Hoover, a really strong Rails developer who sold his company to Groupon um, last year. And um, he's now focused on Codecademy and, and, and various other projects that he's heavily involved with. And um, he got me involved and he got me reading a book on HTML before I knew anything at all about anything technical. And for my first attempt with the great Luminary developers who I originally hired, I recognized that I really had to be involved. I was the client, I had the idea, I have to be involved. I've got to start helping design this thing. I've got to get Mad Mimi running locally on my machine. I've got to learn a little bit about design. And I started shuffling around URLs. I started messing around with the ERB templating language. And eventually, bit by bit, I started learning and, you know, started really enjoying it. And it made Dave's life a lot easier because he was involved with me and he was no longer responsible for delivering a packaged product to the marketplace that he didn't really understand um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a complete way. What I thought, a great developer knows everything he needs to about the product he's building. I thought, this great developer, he knows about email marketing, he knows about email newsletters, he knows about tracking and analytics, and he knows how Google Analytics ties into things, and he knows about drip campaigns and autoresponders and RSS feeds, and, and, and he knows about web forms and, and all sorts of stuff. He'll, don't worry, you know, he's really smart, he's great, he's got awesome chops, he'll figure it out. My new idea of a great developer is one who demonstrates interest in the why do I exist of the business. I found superb success with developers who get involved with the, the why does this business exist? How is this business useful to the world? And fixates on that piece of the business and that really helps them to build out any particular features that they're building out in a, in a way that's really, uh, you know, it's kind of like what Anthony said, you know, in his talk where he's not focused on the bed or the lamp. He's focused on the what does this do aspect. He's focused on, like, what is the service that this is, thing is providing. And um, I think a focus on that makes a great developer. What I thought... A great developer sets optimistic targets. No problem, I think I can do this by Wednesday. No problem, I can do this in a day. My new idea of a great developer is one who hits their targets. This was less crucial to me when it was just me and another guy, or me and uh, two, other, two other developers. It becomes crucial now when um, the team is significantly larger and features are much more sort of uh, we plan things and we send out alerts and email newsletters to, to, to lots of people and um, production cycle now is a lot more critical than it once was. So hitting targets is something that I don't think anyone will ever be able to do anyway. So I'll just move on. <laughs> what I thought, a great developer doesn't imitate. I thought a great developer is totally unique, doesn't need to imitate, doesn't need to analyze their colleagues and doesn't need to check out cool stuff that's happening in the space. My new idea of a great developer is one who does imitate in order to assimilate attractive aspects of different applications and different design techniques and different cool stuff, and then uses that to innovate. What I thought, a developer loves to write code and solve issues. My new idea of a great developer is one who loves the user, the customer, and fixates on the user, and is the user, and uses the application like the user uses it, and constantly puts themselves in the, in, the, in, the, in the space of the, of the user, and uh, attempts to solve the usability-oriented uh, problems from a, from a user-centered place. And that is the end. Um, we're uh, sponsoring some beers. Uh, the Ruby Underground uh, is hosting some beers at uh, 6 p.m. around here. And uh, that's it. Um, I'm happy to answer a couple of one. How much time do I have? One question, no questions? Okay. Um, 
you know, we... Um, communication. Um, I see how they write emails back and forth to me. The last developer we hired was a month ago. We posted an ad on GitHub. And um, his communication style was really was really intelligent. Uh, he seemed really easy to communicate with. And, 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 and that's, uh, we got about 25 responses and, and I think that we, we, we ended up discussing and, and doing well with people who we were able to communicate with nicely and who, uh, who expressed themselves well. In, 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 many, in many aspects, it's, uh, it's uh, you, you know, it doesn't mean that they're going to be like the most hardcore heavy lifter de being able to deal with, you know, our six billion rows of sort of data, you know, and replication and hardcore crazy database issues, but they'll be a great feature developer generally because it tells me that they kind of get stuff, like human-oriented stuff. There was another one over there. Um, it's on. <laughs> Does this uh, developer that you showed, uh, the sysadmin developer, that you showed samples for, uh, does he know that you show this code all around the world? Hey? Does yeah, he know? Yeah, he does. He gave he me does? permission. All right. Um, I'm missing the part in your story of how you turned from a uh, failing uh, interpreter of uh, this uh, music app into this successful uh, Mad Mimi uh, interpreter. Um, there's no secret source except for the fact that um, I focused very, very, very heavily on um, I focused heavily on design, the uh, the app, the product design, and um, there was no marketing. There were no fancy tricks. We we, we, we don't spend money on marketing. Um, the when we released the email product, we kind of stuck with the 37 signals mantra of. Um, being simple and doing less than your competitors, less features, less bloat, etc. And that served us pretty well. Um, people enjoyed the simple product. The brand was pretty decent. I think it connected to a lot of people who were looking for a more a soft sell email product that wasn't enterprisey and plastered with you know jargon terms. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then it was an organic growth process from 2008 until now. There was, it was just incremental, like really incremental. It wasn't just like, oh my gosh, we're exploded, we're so big now. It's like, and it's still not big, it's, we're medium size, <laughs> whatever.